Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It's been a little while since I posted, so I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we will take a look at how I created this shot for my film. We got quite a large camera move, going from a focused close-up to then revealing a larger background with the second character in it. There are a few elements that go into this. We have the foreground hands holding onto this piece of paper with some information about the different climbs that are on this boulder that they're standing in front of. Then we have the second character taking off his jacket. And finally, the painted background that we are panning up on. Painting the background and animating the character taking off his jacket were the two heavier tasks that went into this shot. The foreground hands are just a static drawing, so that did not require as much work. I know that people in the comments have asked and are interested about how long things take me to make, so I'll try as much as possible to get that across. Let's start on the animated character here. For this, I first shot a reference of myself acting out this move, so that I had something to go off. I always recommend shooting your own references, as it's the quickest way and the most accurate way to get a reference that is relevant to your specific shot. You don't have to look like the character that you are drawing, it's mainly to have some form of information um, in front of you to go off. In this case, how does a sweater fold as you pull it off, and how do you grab it, and how does it look in this specific angle? These are things that get answered by shooting it. I could show you the reference I shot, but yeah, showing me stripping bare chested on the internet is not really why I started this channel. Though still make sure to subscribe. Here I approached the animation in a pose to pose fashion, where to start with, I focused on some key poses that define the movement my character is making. I went with quite a clean pass straight away. You could start with a more loose and scribbly pass, but in this case I choose to add in some details in the first drawings. Regarding the time this takes me, the first rougher pass of keyframes can be done relatively quickly if one is efficient. So just in a few hours I would say, or maybe even less, but they are the driving part of the animation, so they require a bit more of my focus. Therefore, I might not work as quickly on those, and I might also play things back more and analyze what I have going on to avoid making any mistakes. The next step is to clean up those keyframes with tighter drawings. Here drawing the character correctly is more the challenge, as the general movement of the animation has already been figured out in the first pass. Depending on the situation, I might have already in between a few of the rough keyframes before cleaning things up, or sometimes if the movement is very small between the frames, it might be better to save the in-between process until the clean drawings are done. The more sloppy the first pass is, the more work is moved over to the cleaning up stage. As I had already spent some time in the first pass drawing my first poses with a bit of detail, cleaning this up was actually pretty straightforward. For shots with a lot of motion and dynamic moves, it might be good to start very loose to capture the energy and the fast pace with your drawings, then revisit and figure out how the details can be applied to the character. This was not a very fast-paced shot, so here I would rather define a few solid keyframes that shape the character's movement.
The third pass for me was to apply the final colors. For this film I have no outlines on my characters, so the cleaned up line drawings only act as a solid reference for the final color pass. Even though this color pass can take some time to do, it's very relaxed work and require almost no active focus. I have even made a swatch with all the colors for each character to keep things consistent in the film and to speed up this process of coloring. The only line work I use is within the color shapes themselves to show overlaps and also some facial details. I knew I wanted this character to be part of a larger camera move, but I animated him statically standing in one spot so that I could later use him as an asset and place him inside a three-dimensional scene. The background featuring the big boulder and the grass below was painted as one tall image. I actually recycled part of another painting done for a similar shot in the film to save some time. Painting full backgrounds can be very time consuming, so when I make a sequence that will have a lot of similar angles in it, I think reusing elements from the different paintings are very useful. The foreground hands and the paper were also painted as an individual static asset. Within Cinema 4D I could combine these assets and animate a camera panning from one to the other. By mapping the background image onto a very simple geometry, which is just a long distorted plane, I created a very simple backdrop to pan my camera over. I could import the 2D character I animated earlier as a texture on a plane and place that in the scene. The foreground hands were also just imported as an image texture onto a plane. I like how simple this setup was, yet very quite effective. From a 2D standpoint we get quite a large change in terms of what the camera is looking at, from a close-up all the way up to a wider establishing shot. This shot will work very well in the story as it shows what my two characters are there for. It introduces the climbing they are projecting in a visual way, showing that there's been some planning going into this. I actually rendered these elements separate from Cinema 4D and took them into After Effects where I could do some compositing. I applied and animated some blur effects to the different layers to get an effect of the camera pulling focus from the foreground to the background as it pans up. This is the final shot, a technically quite simple one but also effective. I have more videos on the way so stay tuned for that, subscribe to not miss any, like the video if you liked it, thank you to all my Patreons, join me there if you want to see more in-depth videos, links are below. I will see you guys in the next one.